Um, my name is Francesca Sampsel and I am a printmaker. I uh, also have a background in mural painting, large scale kind of outdoor things. And I'm going to show you some of what I have done um, to drag myself into the 21st century. Um, uh, this is a body of work I made uh, during the Gulf oil spill. And there's all that oil being spewed into the pristine waters of the Gulf. Um, and kind of covering up all the little creatures and wondering what we had done. Um, the, uh, you can see the images of oil and various things. The pieces are um, printed in the usual fashion. There were woodcuts and viscosity etchings. That's, that's all the mess. I've always have 97 colors on my palette. And this is my studio. Um, was, might give you a clue into how I, how I work and put things together. Um, I do little mock-ups in this fashion. And then in the end, they uh, look like this. So anyway, I was putting this show together for my gallery. And here they were, sitting on the walls, looking nice and pristine and protected behind the glass. And I thought, gee, this has absolutely nothing to do with the Gulf oil spill. And it doesn't convey the angst that um, kind of boiled in my, in my gut when I uh, watched the news and wondered what we were doing to our planet and what we were passing on to the next generation. Um, so from this, I got a unique opportunity to uh, work at the uh, Texas Advanced Computing Center at the University of Texas at Austin. And these are some of the pieces uh, that I made at that point. So this will give you an idea um, of how the work was, was transformed. Um, I was given an opportunity to... Um, to work in the uh, visualization lab at the University of uh, Texas at Austin. And um, I thought, well, it's time to jump into the 21st century. Um, and so uh, these are just a few of the examples of you can see the uh, pieces that I started with. It was a very simple process. I used my $100 Epson scanner and um, set it on high, like 600 DPI, and um, scanned them in. Um, and started compiling files of images that are were adjusted in Photoshop. You can see that some of the, the kind of the oil images, it, all of this piece came from that one uh, clip of a woodcut that I showed you earlier. So take a close look. Um, this is some of the code that's behind um, making those pieces move. Uh, creating the still images was pretty straightforward, um, but I did have to start to learn about writing code before I could make the images move. So this is at the ACES Visualization Lab at the University of Texas at Austin. It, it has in it, among other things, this 75 monitor tile display. It, they're 30 inch uh, monitors, each one of those little squares. It runs 34 feet wide and eight feet. So my process is pretty straightforward. I use an interface called Sage. And you can see on the right hand side, there is a, um, a green display that lays out the 75 screens. And on the left hand side, I have all my files um, and an interface that allows me to select them and drag them over to um, to the screen on the right, and that in turn um, show brings them up on the on the major you know large screen stallion. Um, so I, I do a lot of playing around. That's me um, pulling up kind of one image at a time. I might um, stretch it, try different sizes, try it in different places. I might pull it back into Photoshop and adjust the color. Um, throw it all the way together, all the way together, um, until I find something that. So here you can get a little better look at, um, at the interface. You can see if you look at the, the panel on the right, how they do correspond exactly to what's up on the, um, up on the, on the screens. Um, that's a little closer view. Um, Sage is, uh, well, it's the, it's the interface. It's the main interface. Um, the things that are going on the left over there, on the left-hand screen are different programs that I run at the same time while I'm writing the script. 
oh, well, I'm debugging, whatever. So it's not a straightforward process, but um, it is. It is. So I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, image layering and using Photoshop, which I'm sure that most of the people under well, probably under 40 are used to working with. Um, the first uh, clip that you see here is a straight prints. Uh, there's no alteration. There's a uh, the blackbird is a woodcut. Uh, the piece on the left, the DNA on the left, is a um, viscosity etching. And strangely enough, that um, bottom dark section uh, is a photograph. So this image also is unmanipulated in Photoshop. It's uh, simply a scan of an etching, and the water is a photograph in the middle. So with this piece, um, I used Photoshop to uh, layer over, you can see the, the man with the flying red machine is layered over some water texture and the, uh, the green piece up in the corner is also is a layer of two different print images. So uh, these are some examples of uh, print and photograph uh, combined in you know a larger, a larger scale. Uh, there's also actually a real woodcut there. So I'd always had in my mind that the pieces would move and evolve. Uh, this piece is called Build, a Rebuild, and um, I made this piece when uh, the Japanese tsunami and earthquake and everything were kind of giving us questions about what was happening to our world. Um, the, the movement is made in the script by placing uh, timing, uh, you know, how many seconds you want each image to come up and, and when. So it's just a matter of being very patient with your scripting. So this is a piece I call microgreen. I've always been very interested in uh, microscopic images and sources. Um, I guess I'm just tired of looking at the world at a normal scale. Um, and I was concerned about all those little organisms that were kind of getting suffocated by oil. Um, and so I made a piece about it. So there were um, there are many more scripts and pieces to show you, but um, I'm going to close with this one, which I've shown you already. It's the build rebuild piece because it is one of my favorites, um, and it's uh, thinking about how Japan, you know, had uh, to deal with the destruction after Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the war and whatnot, and how they built and how um, now it's needing to be rebuilt again, and how that kind of goes along with um, living on the ring of fire and and that cult. So I wanted to take a moment to thank all the Viz Lab staff um, at 